Okay, and I haven't made a video for you guys in a while, but I'm back and I'm focused again on trying to lose weight. And today what I'd like to talk to you guys about is intermittent fasting. Now, intermittent fasting is a, well, I mean, historically it stretches back all the way to at least the Stoics of Greece, and probably much longer than that as part of religious ceremonies, but its popularity as a diet technique arose much more recently. What it is is an alternation of periods of fasting, periods where you don't eat anything, with periods of relatively normal eating. And this is supposed to have certain metabolic benefits, it's supposed to help you lose weight, it's supposed to do all these things. And so what I've been spending a bunch of my time recently doing is looking into this and experimenting with this. So one of the first things I did is I went on Lean Gains, which is a site that was created by Martin Burkhan. And he's done an excellent job of compiling a lot of different research on it. And what he, a lot of the studies he references show that it does seem to have these certain health benefits. Then I've read the book Eat, Stop, Eat, which is a book specifically designed to help you lose weight, written by Bat Brad Pilsen, who is one of the leaders of the intermittent fasting movement. And the way his system works is you just take two, about two, 24-hour fast per week with at least 48 hours in between the fast. Now, for a lot of us, not eating for 24 hours sounds awful. And that's what I thought, too. But the first time I tried it, I actually found it was easier than I thought it was. I found myself drinking more water to compensate, and I did drink a little bit of caffeine to try to suppress my appetite. But overall, the 24 hours went not that bad. Now, part of the reason this works is because you're not fasting like from morning until dawn. What you'll do is you'll eat, like, let's say you're doing a lunch to lunch fast. So you'll finish eating lunch on a Tuesday, and then not eat for the next 24 hours until the next lunch on Wednesday. So it ends up not really being that bad. You miss two meals. And what this is supposed to accomplish is several things. It's been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. Now, why this is important is because insulin resistance is one of the most common issues in the American healthcare system, both in terms of metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. What happens in your body is when you consume too much food, especially carbohydrates, your body releases a lot of insulin to compensate. Now what insulin is, it's a signaling molecule that binds to receptors on cells throughout your body and tells them to bring the glucose out of your bloodstream and into the cells. It's a very important molecule for that purpose. But what seems to happen over an extended period of time, if your insulin levels are too high, is the cells become resistant to it. They need more and more insulin to get the glucose out of the blood. And your pancreas, which produces the glucose, keeps reading the high blood sugar levels and keeps producing the insulin. And so then it, you enter into like a feedback loop where it becomes harder and harder for your cells to deal with the sugar in your blood. And if your insulin levels get too high, you actually start damaging the beta pancreatic cells on your pancreas that produce the insulin, which can then put you into serious irreversible type 2 diabetes. So, intermittent fasting of at least 16 hours has been shown to improve your insulin sensitivity and therefore could be a useful treatment for type 2 diabetics. Remember, I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, it's just one thing that seems to show in the research. But, for the rest of us, it might be a helpful preventative measure in terms of preventing type 2 diabetes and stuff like that. There's also some interesting research that shows that it may help improve your triglyceride and cholesterol levels. There's a metabolic pathway in your body called the mTOR pathway. When this is activated, it increases your insulin sensitivity, like we talked about, but it also seems to prevent triglyceride accumulation, prevent lipogenesis, which is creation of new fats, and prevent formation of the bad cholesterol. So, that helps us think that intermittent fasting may also have cardioprotective effects. There's also significant evidence in mice and limited evidence in humans that intermittent fasting improves your lifespan. The mechanism for this is still unknown. There's theories about it relating to glucose metabolism with the insulin, to the cardioprotective effects, to stuff like that, but it's not completely shown yet. Besides that, there's also this product in your body called autophagy, which is when your cells repair and replace themselves. However, this seems to only be able to happen in, or seems to primarily happen in a fasted state. And so proponents of intermittent fasting believe that entering this fasted state can help um, enter this autophagy and repair your cells. In this same vein, though, whenever you talk about fasting or skipping meals or people like that, 
there's this belief people have that um, you're going to slow down your metabolism. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Why? Because it kickstarts your metabolism. That's been the story that's been fed to us, but if you look at the literature, it does not seem to support that. It seems that actually coming out of up to a couple day fast, there seems to be no effect on your metabolism and maybe only a slight decrease while you're in the fast, but not significant enough to really make a difference in terms of weight loss or stuff like that. Even more than that, you have to consider that the other health benefits may still outweigh it. Us in America, at least many of us, are used to plenty, three square meals a day, comfortable eating. We're not used to going without. And so what seems to have, ha seems to have happened for many of us is we've lost track of our natural hunger signals and instead seem to eat on social cues. Like we know at 8 a.m. when we wake up, we're supposed to have our bowl of cereal. We know around noon we're going to go out and eat lunch. And at 6.30, it's time to make dinner. But our body's actual hunger response may not actually be signaling us at that point. But it's difficult to say for certain because the hunger mechanisms are very poorly understood. However, I can say personally from going through two 24-hour fasts is that you do not find that you're as hungry as you expect to be. You do much better than you're expecting. And... That first meal when you come out of the fast tastes fantastic, let me tell you. Another thing to consider is our evolutionary history. Early humans did not have steady access to food until the creation of agriculture. And so before that point, it would make sense for our bodies to physiologically adapt to cycles of feast and famine, right? Periods where we have plenty to eat, where we store all the fat, that's what happens during the feast periods, and periods of famine where our body has to live off the stores and that these adaptations that our body may be designed but in order to handle these periods of fast that these periods of fast may actually be essential for our health is intriguing especially when you consider the rise of certain metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes in our modern society perhaps the best solution for our health and for our nutrition isn't some superfood, isn't some supplement, isn't a lot of the stuff I talk about, but actually occasionally going without, not eating when you could. I'll be writing up a more full guide on this, but I just wanted to give you guys an early preview of some of my first thoughts on this. Thank you for anybody who tuned in. It was a pleasure talking to you. Hope you enjoy the video.